Hello, I'm Judah Sher, an application engineer at Go Engineer. Today I'm going to show you how I used 3D scanning and 3D printing to improve my microphone arm here. One of the reasons I picked out this arm for my microphone was that each joint used screws to resist movement, which meant that unlike versions that use springs, these were adjustable. Unfortunately, I soon discovered that if I extended the arm out pretty far horizontally, the cantilevered weight of my microphone was too much, and no matter how hard I tightened down the screws, it wouldn't hold up. I took apart the base joint and discovered that it was a pretty simple design. The screws squeezed two conical plastic parts into matching faces on the base of the stand, and friction between these faces provided the restraining force. Surprisingly, the plastic parts, which I'm calling friction nuts, were made of very slick plastic with a glossy surface finish, so I figured that if I replaced them with something that would generate more friction, my problem would be solved. The first step is going to be to scan this friction nut. So I will start the scanning process by holding down a button on the scanner, and then I'll start scanning. So I have the friction nut clamped in a soldering fixture, and that's just going to help me hold it up in the air so I can get all the way around it during scanning. It also helps small light pieces from moving while I turn the turntable. Now you'll notice that the turntable I have this set on is also not coming into the scan, and that's because I imported a scanning template that included the turntable's targets and a clipping plane based on those targets that omits the table itself from the scan. Very helpful if you're going to be scanning things on the same surface quite frequently like I do. Now that I've eliminated that extra data, I'll finalize my scan and that will approve the final resolution of 0.6 millimeters and smart resolution. And that looks quite good. Now I could do additional scans to capture more features, but the only features I really need are this flat here, a nice clean cross section for a revolve command, and the location of one of these notches. There's another one here, but since they're symmetrical, I don't need to worry about capturing both, just one. And here we are. I have some entities for aligning it to the origin point. I created my cross section with which I can use to make my profile for a revolve. I created a circle for my location feature there. And finally, another cross section that'll just give me the location of this flat there. Here we are in SolidWorks with all of the entities that I brought over from VX Elements. We have the cross section for the revolve, the cross section for the flat, and down here, one circle. So all I did was first I created a cleaner version of that cross section with some simple lines, did a revolve. Then I used that circle to extrude cut my locating feature. I of course needed to then mirror it to the other side. And then finally create this sketch which extrudes the flat for one of the nuts. Now that we have the friction nut reverse engineered, we have to make some sort of change that will hopefully make it function better than the original. To keep track of all my different design changes, I've created different configurations inside of this part file. If I activate my version 1 configuration, you can see that my first idea was to add these radial cuts to the design so that the clamping force is concentrated in several smaller faces instead of one big conical face. I printed a set of these out, installed them on the arm, and tried them out. Unfortunately, I struck out on this one. As you can see, it actually performs worse. This could be due to all sorts of factors. Maybe the cuts I made actually decreased friction, or maybe the PLA was slicker than the original material, or maybe I just got the shape wrong. Now, at this point in the design process, it's very tempting to make all sorts of changes in the hopes that something is going to fix your problem. The downside of doing this is that if it doesn't work, you don't know what, which of your changes actually had an effect and what effects those are, so you don't know where to proceed from there. And so for that reason, it's very important to just make one change at a time, even if you don't think it's going to be enough, so you know what effect each change has. 
With this in mind, my next step was to take the friction nuts back out and examine them for any clues. Sure enough, the conical faces seemed to have very little wear, indicating that they weren't quite reaching the metal base part before the shoulder of the friction nut bottomed out. Thankfully, this is easy to fix. Offset those faces outwards. Back in SolidWorks, you can see that for version 2, I simply added a move face command that offsets that conical face a quarter of a millimeter outwards. This new version tightened up beautifully, but the joint had some odd play in it. Upon closer inspection, it looked like the friction nut was rotating relative to the outer arm. It shouldn't do that since the two locating features should lock them together, so I took it apart again and noticed that the cuts in the conical face made the walls on either side of the locating features pretty thin, and the features on the arm were mashing them, creating the wiggle room. For version 3, I simply deleted the cuts on either side of the indents and tried again. Testing didn't show much improvement, and when I took the friction nuts off, I couldn't see any visible damage like I saw with version 2. It was at this point that I did something I probably should have done earlier. You see, VX model has a nifty feature that allows you to import a CAD model and create a color map that compares that CAD model to your scan data. So we can actually see if the design I made fits the actual scan data. Once I did this, the problem was obvious. The locating indents were far too big. Not only that, by dialing in the color map, I was able to see a gradient that indicated that they were actually conical, not cylindrical. One dimension change, draft angle, and test print later, and I was ready to test version 4. This one, as you can see, works great. It holds position even at a long extension, and the friction nuts are tightly locked to the arm, eliminating the play. I have to admit, I got lucky that my first idea of adding those radial cuts actually worked. It usually takes a few tries to arrive at a working solution, so I'd love to hear how you would have improved the friction nut. Comment down below with your ideas, or even critiques of my design. In any case, thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll be making a lot more, so if you have ideas for other videos that you'd like to see, post those down below as well. As always, please visit GoEngineer.com for access to professional training, upcoming events, and more from your number one online technical resource. Catch you later.